Clue Control has a lot of options and settings that you can configure so that it matches the theme and style of every game room that you've got. We're going to take a quick look at some of those options. We're going to click System Setup and then go into Setup Facility. When you go into System Setup, you'll see that Clue Control is going to open two windows for you. One window is your configuration window. It's the one right here that says Facility Setup. You've got four tabs across the top. The display, ER Display, Clue Settings, System Settings, and Optional Features you can turn off and on. And then behind that, you'll see you've got a preview of the Escape Room window. What you would do is drag this window over to the monitor that's going to be in your Escape Room. And for my purposes, I'm going to keep them both on the same monitor so that you can see both screens at once. But you wouldn't do that. You'd put this one in the escape room. You'd have this one in your control room. When I click maximize, you can see it makes the ER display take up the whole window. It gets rid of the menu bar up at the top and really fills it up very nicely. You can change the background. You can use just a solid color if you want to. If you want to do this. And then the whole thing is just whatever color you choose. That's good. But most times what you're going to want to do is have an image. You're going to want a picture in there. So what you can do is click image. And I've got a couple here. We'll, we'll just choose the brick wall. And you can see it loads the image up. If you don't want it to stretch to fit, it'll put it in the middle like this. And you can do that. But most times you're going to stretch to fit. The other thing is, notice this box here for the timer. If you unclick it, the timer will have a box around it. And that might help with readability but it depends where you're going to put it. So for this one, we're going to we're going to leave Use Transparent Background marked so you can see it kind of blends in better. And I'm going to click this Manually Set Up the Screen. You see that puts this box around the timer. That lets me drag this around so I can put it where I want it. I'm going to put it right in the middle of this, this white spot here. The other thing I can do with the timer is I can change the font. I can change the style and color of the font so we can choose different font colors in here if we want to. And of course, it'll it'll display the way that you, you tell it to. We can also change the location of everything else. So this little section right here lets you choose what kind of screen you're getting a preview of. Right now, this is the idle screen where no clue is displayed. If I click text clue, it'll show me a preview of what a text clue would look like. Now that you can see, this one doesn't look really great. So let's change this around some. The first thing we might want to do is tell it to use a transparent background. So now the clue just shows up. Because we have manually set up the screen marked, we can drag this around and we can resize it. So we're going to squish it down. We'll put it right on top of the wood floor down here. And then we'll change the font so it stands out a little better. Let's try a bold font and maybe a, a black color. Let's see how that looks. That shows up really well, but maybe it's not attention getting enough. Let's try, let's try red. Yeah, that looks good. So you can change this around so that it matches your theme and really goes with your room. If you want to look at how the AV clue will show up, this is the purple box represents where the picture or video would show up. And again, you can size this and move it around however you need to. So if you want the videos only to show up in this little corner, you can do that with them. Put it up there. And that shows you how you can use the escape room display screen to set up your escape room display. Now let's look at the clue setup. The first thing is if you haven't decided to lay out the screen yourself, if you're just using the default settings, and you want the picture and video clues to take up the whole screen, you can mark this full screen clues box and they'll take up the whole screen. If you've manually sized and laid out the screen, then this box really has no effect. If you've got a technology based room, maybe you'd like the waveform for audio clues option. What this does is for clues that are audio only, it'll show that a sillograph or waveform of the audio so it looks nice and high tech. And it'll show that wherever the picture or video clues are supposed to show up. If you want to have an idle message that shows on the screen when there's no clue, you can type that in here. Or, of course, you can leave it blank. Whenever a clue is displayed, Clue Control can play a sound and alert to get the player's attention. To choose that alert sound, just click these ellipses here. And choose the sound that you want played and click Open. Clue Control can also display warnings. And a warning is to tell the players when they are breaking a rule and, and they need to stop doing something. When you display a warning, Clue Control covers the whole screen with a color, and it also plays the sound file that you choose. So to choose the color you want for your warning, you're going to click Color for Warning. Click the color you want. We'll choose red and click OK. And then you choose the sound file the same way you did for the clues. You're just going to click the ellipses and choose the file you want played. You also have the option of having an in-room clue counter. This is just a graphic counter on the screen. You mark this box to enable it. 
tell Clue Control how many clues the players are allowed to have. And if you want to caption on where that display goes, you can type that in this box. You can choose the unused clue picture and the used clue picture separately. So for unused clue, maybe we want uh, this lock. And for a used clue, we want the lock with an X on it. You don't have to have a picture. If you want an unused clue to just be a blank, and then when they use up a clue, the lock shows up, that's fine. Or the other way around, you can have an unused clue that's a lock, and every time they use a lock, it disappears. Whatever you think will match your theme best. So that's a quick overview of the clue settings screen. Let's take a look at the system settings next. We just have a couple quick options here on the system settings screen. Set the default time for your escape room. This is in minutes, so this is a 60 minute room we've got here. If you want your logo file displayed, click these ellipses and browse to your logo file. If you want background audio to be played, click the ellipses and choose a background audio sound. And then you can click loop audio track if you need to, to make it play over and over again. And down here is our statistics tracking. What this is, is keeping track of when players solve puzzles and how fast they solve them, which puzzles they solve, whether or not they solve the game. Choosing none records nothing, obviously. If you choose standard, all the recording is done behind the scenes and your game masters don't have to do anything. If you choose extra, the game masters have the option of entering a couple extra pieces of information, such as the game master name and any notes that they want to capture. So choose your statistics tracking option here. We'll choose standard. And then we'll take a look at the optional features. Optional features lets you turn things off and on depending on what you're going to use. If you want to use timer-based events so that at a certain time on the clock things happen, go ahead and click this so that it's enabled. If you're going to use any of the auto trigger options, either Modbus or Z-Wave, mark whichever one you're going to enable and choose the appropriate settings for the network card for Modbus or the COM port for Z-Wave. We'll have separate videos for both of these to give you more detail. And if you enable either the Modbus or the Z-Wave, you can also enable the meta triggers, which allows you to combine multiple devices into a single trigger. And again, we'll have more specifics on that video. Just know that this is where you come to enable these things. And with that, you've got everything set up. Your next step will be to create some puzzles. And from there, you're going to be ready to run a room. If you have any other questions, please reach out to us at Clue Control. We're always here to help.